were here to talk about energy policy, it would be natural for us to talk about the political activities of oil companies. But when the subject is U.S. Middle East policy, and you bring up the Israel lobby, you're reaching out and grabbing the third rail. Because this entire discussion takes place in the shadow of centuries of anti-Semitism, including bizarre conspiracy theories like the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, and of course tragic events like the Holocaust, if you talk about a powerful interest group that is mostly, though by no means exclusively, comprised of Jewish Americans, some may think that you're saying that there is some kind of secret conspiracy to control, control U.S. foreign policy. For us, the Israel lobby is an interest group, just like lots of other interest groups in America. Most of its activities are as American as apple pie. We don't question Israel's legitimacy or its right to exist. We also think that the activities of the Israel lobby and its impact on U.S. foreign policy are subjects that reasonable people ought to be able to discuss openly the same way we would discuss any other groups that try to influence American policy, domestic, or foreign. Today, giving Israel nearly unconditional support is one of the reasons that we have a terrorism problem, and it makes it harder to address a range of other problems throughout the Middle East. The lobby is a loose coalition of individuals and groups that work openly to move American foreign policy in a pro-Israel direction. This includes organizations like APAC, the Conference of Presidents, the Zionist Organization of America, Christians United for Israel. Like other interest groups, the Israel lobby works in two main ways. First, it operates inside the Beltway here in Washington, getting sympathetic people appointed to key positions and giving politicians clear incentives to support the positions it favors. Organizations like APAC work 24-7 to convince politicians to support their views. The second strategy is to try and shape public opinion and public discourse so that uh, Israel is viewed favorably by most Americans. Mainstream media tend to be strongly pro-Israel, especially in their editorial commentary and in terms of op-ed columnists and pundits. Compared with either Europe or with Israel itself, there's a much narrower range of views expressed on this subject in, say, the New York Times, Washington Post, LA Times, papers like that. If any, any, few, if any, U.S. politicians are going to say anything remotely critical of Israel. The result is, on this one issue, there's very little serious debate about support for Israel in the United States, especially in Congress. Uh, it's true that Americans do have a generally favorable image of Israel, which, by the way, John and I do as well, but they don't think the United States should be giving it unconditional or one-sided aid. <coughs> a survey conducted by the Anti-Defamation League found that 78% of Americans think the United States should favor neither side in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Another survey reported by Americans for Peace Now found that 87% of Jewish Americans favor a two-state solution. The gap between what the people really want and what our policy is is mostly due to the political influence of the various groups in the lobby. 